Guten Tag, I'm Sibyl Tewton and it has been almost one year, almost one year since I've uploaded my Let's Introduce Transactica video. Um, I'm the same guy who uh, made the German playthrough um, under the, uh, the channel name is Russo. And now oh, we have to switch disks, of course. Um, I kept the whole disk switching thing in including the emulation of the disk drive sound because that's just part of the whole uh, Amiga nostalgia. And if the emulator can do it, then I think it's a great feature, so we're going to keep, it in, uh, keep that in. Right. So, Transarctica. <laughs> I'm back at this wonderful game I can't get. Um, I can't really separate myself from it. It's hard. Because... Well, the thing is, uh, most of you prob I mean, I, 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 I said so many things in my German playthrough. And now I have to say them all again in English because you probably uh, didn't understand a thing. But at least you saw the game. Uh, you can choose to control your train from uh, inside if you if you want. Like, you can switch uh, directions and all of that. Um, yeah, you can do it in here, but of course it's much more practical uh, to use the shortcuts on the world map. Alright, Transarctica. <laughs> well, I'm not going to do another full playthrough, because if you want to see a really, really extensive... Uh, my German playthrough has covered everything, I think. Everything that I remember um, from the game has been shown in the German playthrough, um, including completely unnecessary raids by mole people and all of that. Um, so let's cover some of the basics. How do you control your train? Well, you need to look at this panel a lot because it tells you all the basic information, right? The pressure uh, inside your... well, whatever the English word is. Um, and this thing here. If it reaches the red marker, uh, then, then stop shoveling coal. Because otherwise the train engine is going to explode and you don't want that. So what we're, do, what we're going to do in, in this English playthrough is uh, I'm just showing you how to get through the game, right? Some basic tips on getting started and then how to beat it because that's arguably the biggest problem. So it's up to you how you start out. Um, I usually go to Inshallah and I buy a machine gun um, for, for starters because you don't have one, you only have a barracks with 10 soldiers. And a machine gun can save you a lot of trouble. I also get a tender so that we can uh, carry more coal. And then I get three merchandise wagons, right? And the reason I'm doing this is because to start off our journey, we're going to make some money, which, uh, you know, I mean, who can say no to that? Okay, the sound is glitching up. Uh, I was afraid that it would do that. And I have to fix it somehow by the next episode. But we won't let, uh, you know, we won't let this allow to bring us down. So what you're going to do with your uh, three merchandise wagons is to go to Granada. And you make... Oh, come on. What is it with the sound? I really have no idea. I don't think this happened in the... I, I don't know. I have to check the settings again. Right, and in Granada, what they do is they sell fur for two bucks. This is the unit they use uh, to to measure, uh, to to measure how do you say quantities, right? So what we're actually paying is two bucks of uh, of the second type of coal that we carry around. Oh yeah, I should have explained that you have two types of coal. Uh, one that you use for you know. Uh, powering your train and the other for pay uh, for payment right this is uh, uh what's it called lignite right and this is anthracite i hope i i um, i hope i have the english pronunciation right anthracite and lignite and anthracite i think is just regular brown coal <laughs> i'm not sure uh, anyway that's what you use for powering your train so so don't so so don't confuse them and lignite is what you use for payment so as the first order of the day, we're going to buy all the fur 
that they have in Granada. Which is why you have to bring as many supply wagons uh, or carts. What I what's the official? Is it carts or wagons or I don't know anything. Um, bring as many as you can. Um, three should be enough as you just saw. And regularly check if there's still some pressure inside uh, your train engine because otherwise you might stop. And it's just losing unnecessary momentum and time. So, but also... You know, don't forget to stop the guy. And the reason why it's important to differentiate between the two types of code is because you could also order him to shovel some of your lignite. Uh, but of course, why would you do that, right? <laughs> because it's used for payment, so... so Many, many people, you know, have probably uh, failed in the beginning of the game because you should never order this guy to shovel coal. Okay, we have discovered a mine of anthracite, and this is important, uh, it's a little bit... It's actually in range, we could get there someday. No, it's... It's really in range, it's just north of Berlin. However, we don't have any manpower right now. So it would be pointless to drive to that mine. Because you can, uh, you can only visit every mine once, and then it's closed. So... You have to make sure that you get enough coal out of it. So let's stop in Rome, because I want to show you something. I'm really sorry about the sound. I didn't know this would happen. I don't know why it's doing that either. So yeah, um, by the way, this is the Amiga version, um, which has better music, of course. Uh, this was during a time when the Amiga was still superior to uh, DOS PCs, um, but that era ended pretty quickly. <laughs> but Transactica came out, it has a DOS version, but you'll notice that graphically and, and uh, in terms of sound and graphics, it's just not really up to... I mean, it's weird to say that about the graphics because there's no... <laughs> I mean, look at it. it. It looks pretty much exactly the same, but the colors are a little bit different and all that. Okay, so you're in Rome. Uh, Rome is not an industrial city, it's one of the cities that's just named city. So you can talk to people and you can visit the archives, right? And people in Rome tell you about the philosopher Urga, uh, Urga, <laughs> Urga who um, apparently has found a paradise, a little bit a Garden of Eden, where the temperatures can even reach 10 degrees. I'm assuming Celsius because the game was made in France. Okay, and... The archives say that the Viking Union uh, has conducted some research, right, and that um, the paradise that Urga found is no longer accessible by train because he destroyed the tracks. Smart man, smart, smart man. So now we're going to visit another town, and it's Turin, another commercial city, but in this one, you can buy those bad boys, right? Um, line inspection cars and of course uh, rails line inspection cars important later on um, We can get two, I suppose. Oh, no, we can't carry any Okay, so we are fully loaded on fur <laughs> from Granada. Oh Yeah, and what we're going to do with this fur is we're going to sell it to the good people of Amsterdam Because they are going to pay us And I'm not kidding 60 bucks so we bought it for two and we're going to sell it for 60 and uh, I didn't release the break and this is pretty much your first order of because otherwise you would be driving around trying to make some money and this will give you a pretty big boost right at the start of the game um, significantly speeding up your progress so I recommend I don't know, there really shouldn't be... I, I recommend this to everybody, <laughs> because the prices for fur are always the same at the start. And... Yeah, I know, that's why I... Oh, I didn't. Sorry. So you should... What is it with the sounds? It didn't do that last time. It really annoys me, to be honest. You also can't hear the sound uh, that it should make when you switch uh, directions. Okay. Amsterdam, and now you can sell, and this is why I uh, bought another tender so that we can carry all the coal. 
Look at that money just shooting up there. It's insane. I don't know if they did it on purpose, but this is something you can do right at your starting point. And now you have over 5,000 bucks of Lignite, right? And with those 5,000 bucks, you can just, we don't need anything from Amsterdam. With those 5,000, you can then proceed um, to a town, to another city, which is also nearby. Actually, now you have a lot of options. You have Ruhr, very attractive industrial town. You have Gdansk, also my, my favorite, my, probably my favorite town in Transarctica is Gdansk. I'm always there, I buy everything there. Um, and of course Berlin, which is um, where you can get soldiers. But soldiers in Berlin, uh, in Berlin are extremely expensive. So if you can avoid it, um, don't buy your soldiers. Whoops. Watch it. Okay. Um, don't buy your soldiers in Berlin, even though we just made a ton of money. Where do you need to get... Ah, yeah. Uh, this is the German Ruhr area. And they have uh, cranes, which you need later on. Actually, we could get a crane right now, I suppose. But let's just... Uh, let's fully equip ourselves in Gdansk first. Because this town... Ah, it's, it's my favorite. It's my favorite city. Gdansk. And another mine. Yeah, we definitely need cranes. Ah, it's also close by, look at that. And we need anthracite, because as you can see we're running out, so what we should probably do is, yeah, we should get the crane. And then we should visit the mine, so that we can make some coal. I mean, if times get tough, you can always use the lignite. Um, but it's really, I mean, you're, ba you're literally burning money, so don't do it. Gdansk? is, I think, the only city where you can get this baby, <laughs> the missile launcher. Don't get it yet. Don't get it right now because it's pretty much useless at this point of the, at the game. What you can get is the spy wagon. There's really nothing wrong with that. Um, two cannons. Also, I think Gdansk has the lowest price for cannons, so getting cannons at 450 is a pretty sweet deal. Uh, get two cannons and another machine gun. Remember, we paid 500 in Inshallah for the machine gun. Why did I buy it, actually, if you think about it? You can come here. But, I mean, you don't know, maybe you'll encounter a train on the way. Um, let's get two livestock wagons. I g uh, no, wait, wait. Let's get XXL barracks. Okay, um, yeah, that should do it. And if you follow my steps in this first video, then you should, unless you run into a train of the Viking Union, which shouldn't happen, but it could happen to you, I mean, I don't know, um, they drive around randomly, so I really have no way of predicting um, where these trains are going to show up. Ah! And there it is. <laughs> Saw that? That's what happens when you drive around carelessly. Um, so let's insert another disc and let's have our first fight. Didn't really plan on showing you that, but I mean, that's just how it goes. Um, your first train shouldn't be a problem. It should be a pretty small train. And also, we just bought cannons, so we can pretty much just shoot that thing. And he also has a cannon! <laughs> Isn't that nice? Oh god. Mm, let's destroy the livestock if we can. He doesn't have barracks. Uh, that's good, because then we don't have to worry about soldiers coming over. Unless, of course, he sends out the mammoths. Mammoths? You have to excuse my pronunciation, because as I said, I'm uh, just a um, German guy. I guess we can send our guys over. He doesn't have any machine guns, so they can... I should explain, uh, cannons shoot at other carts or wagons, and machine guns shoot at all the soldiers that walk around. Oh, he stopped. So during these battles, um, it looks pretty easy right now, 
but it's going to get extremely stressful later on. So you can lay some uh, explosives and then move your soldiers across the enemy train. We're going to avoid these guys because we only have 10 soldiers and there's really no need to fight. Watch that wagon because uh, he might bring a mammoth out. I had mammoth? Is that how you say it? It sounds so weird. Uh, he might bring one out. And they are always stocked with at least one soldier. And so then you have a soldier walking around on your train. And as you can see down here, he already shot uh, at our tender. And I didn't hear that because the sound emulation really isn't as good as it should be. A lot of sounds, um, there are a lot of sounds missing. I don't hear them all. What you can do in this situation is get your guy down. And then the cars will move towards you. <laughs> He's just shooting. Does the AI doesn't know what to do? Um, in order to win, ah, we don't have to walk any further. Come on, just put down the TNT, get down, get back home. Um, in order to win, you have to defeat all the military capabilities of the enemy train, meaning cannons, machine guns. Not the engine necessarily. Um, if you can, don't destroy it because then you'll get the coal. And this is something that we want because we are running low on brown coal. So now we have to fight this guy. Um, he won't come down. And that's a problem because I don't know how many men he has. So if his unit is larger than our 10 men, or bigger, I should say bigger, larger doesn't fit. Um, if he has more than 10 men, we, uh, we're going to lose our soldiers. <laughs> and that's pretty much... Uh, that's not something that you want. Machine guns can only hit targets. Be careful because this game has friendly fire. Uh, machine guns can only hit mammoths and soldiers who are down here. You can't shoot the guys on the enemy wagons. Okay, come on, just a little bit. Come on. Okay, now we have to see. Yes, we won. How many? So the fight should be over. Do we have to destroy the livestock wagons? Because this... I guess you have to. I thought that we could maybe capture it. Um, but mammoths... Okay, so then let me update what I said. You have to destroy all soldiers, cannons, machine guns and mammoths. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I really can't pronounce this word. I have to do something about that. Alright, and now you can see... Uh, okay, we lost one soldier. I guess that we were lucky. 700 lignite. Right. Yeah, but I want to know how much brown coal. I want to know the amount of anthracite. But we're going to, we're going to see it. To switch discs again. Yeah, actually, first episode is over. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to drive to the Ruhr area. Nothing. Why didn't they have any brown coal? That is some major bullshit. Because we're running low, as I said before. Which is why what we're going to do now is we're going to buy the crane and then go into that mine. If we had a prison, right, then we would have been able to recover some slaves from that battle. But we don't have a prison, so we can't carry any slaves. And there are wild mammoths. But we don't have any livestock wagons either. So we're going to have to use the crane. Oh yeah. So, okay, uh, get the observation box. Do yourself a favor, get the observation box. Um, I'm going to buy a large prison, just for the sake of it, because in case, you know, if we can capture some slaves, then why not? 
and the crane. And I guess another tender, because you never know. Okay, these are big merchandise wagons. Um, yeah, but we have to be careful. We only have like 800... Uh, yeah, hmm. It's a conundrum, <laughs> if that's the right word, but let's get one. Let's get one. Um, the thing is, because I know what I'm going to buy, I really don't have any need to uh, save up on Lignite. Because unless you lose a lot of wagons in battle, um, there's really no unexpected uh, purchases you have to make. So, let's get some anthracites. And that's why it's important if you don't have... Um, okay, I'm going, to show to, I'm going to show it to you what happens. You go in, right, then you get the cool screen and this also pretty cool music. It has a wealth index, I really don't know what it means. And now it tells you, okay, we don't have any slaves, we don't have any mammoths, we do have one crane, and what do we get? 1,000 bags of anthracite. I mean, that's pretty okay. <laughs> I'm satisfied, actually. Um, obviously, the more workers you have, um, the more coal you'll get out of the mine. Depending on how long the mine has been opened. So... And you can, and you can only visit it one time, as I said, so... You know, if you... If you only get, like, 100 out of it, then... That's just bad luck. It's just too bad. So, as I said, this is it for the first episode. Um, I'm going to give you a quick roadmap so that you know what we're going to do. We're going to drive down here because this is where the philosopher has his uh, secret base hideout here in this paradise somewhere. In order to go here, you need to drill because you need to drill through that mountain. The drill is up here in rum. In order to get there, you need some uh, you need some rails that you can that you can put over there, and of course workforce. We have a crane that should totally do it. Um, the more labor force you have, the quicker you know you can you can build the bridge. But you need to buy rails, right? The philosopher is going to give you a key. The key is for Oslo. It's a hidden city, but it's here. Um, and there, you know, you can get uh, the Geiger counter, which you need to use in order to uh, detect radiation. In order to get to Oslo, however, you will need to cross this bridge. And there's a sea monster. <laughs> Are you still following me? Because you need to write this down. There's a sea monster under that bridge. If you cross the bridge, the sea monster is going to destroy your train. In order to defeat the sea monster, you need the harpoon. You get the harpoon from... I forgot where the harpoon is. Um, the harpoon. Where do you get the harpoon? You can get it, it's in some city. I'm going to tell you next episode, I promise. Uh, but you have to... Well, first thing is, we're going to have to buy the drill in rum. For that, we need some rails and stuff. Uh, and then we're going to need a harpoon. And as soon as I remember uh, where it is, it could be... I mean, it could be here in New Beijing. It could be in... No, not Tuskent. Uh, Tuskent is good for getting soldiers, but the best place to get soldiers is here. In Abu Dhabi that's where soldiers are the cheapest but you can you can't get any spice in Abu Dhabi so um, you need to pick up spice from Berlin or Moscow spice are free but you need uh, the special wagon to carry them and you can only carry five per wagon right so get soldiers in Abu Dhabi if you can they're really cheap down there um, get the harpoon in. I, something tells me it's New Beijing, but I re I'm really not sure. Why would they have the harpoon? I don't remember where the harpoon is. I'm have to find that out. Anyway, as soon as you have... No, that's not Oslo. What am I saying? 
No, it is Oslo. That's Oslo. That's Oslo. Um, as soon as all of that is done, as soon as you have the Geiger counter from Oslo, you will get a message that you have to go to Omsk. Because Omsk is under attack by wild wolves and apparently that's a problem. Because people don't have guns. I don't know why that's... Uh, but you have to go to Oslo. To Omsk, what am I saying? Because Omsk is under siege from wild wolves. And in Omsk, you can get an extra engine. And you need the extra steam engine to drive up here. Which is the Himalayas, right? And in order to go up here, because there's a secret passage, the, uh, the message we just got is just another mine. Yeah. Right, and down here is the secret passage from the Viking Union that will lead you to the final boss fight and the end of the game. In order to get up here, you need to locate, using the Geiger counter, you need to locate uh, the old uh, nuclear power plant in Chernobyl, which uh, is here. That's Kiev and Chernobyl is around here. Or is it here? It should be here. You need to spe you need to send some spies here, and uh, yeah, then you deactivate it by blowing it up, and then you can drive down here. So I hope you've written it down. This is <laughs> this is what we're going to do. Um, the thing is, I'm really not sure if we need to do all of that, because if you know what to do, I would be interested in finding out if you can just skip all of that, go directly to Omsk buy the steam engine before the wolves appear then send the spice here and open up the passage and that's it the only thing that you have to do then is make a lot of money and get a crap ton of cannons and soldiers because the final train that you have to fight is like a, it's a monster <laughs> it's a monster you will need all the firepower you can get so anyway i've talked way too long I'll see you guys next episode when we, you know, we're going to do all the things you need to do. And I'll see you then. I'll fix the sound. Enjoy your, enjoy your week. See you around.